Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and if you create templates for any reason, you're gonna to wanna to stick around. This video is about an excellent new feature to Adobe After Effects, or at least newer at the time of recording. It's media replacement in motion graphics templates. Users can now swap out a logo in an intro, you could change out clips in a montage, you could bring in new images for lower thirds, and even some more abstract uses. Since any footage element can be swapped and we can use footage elements to drive complex effects, the possibilities for procedural graphics are just way more modular now. So stick around as we take a tour of this new feature and take a look at some of its uses. And since we need some media to put in our template, it's a great time to thank this video sponsor, Yellow Images. Yellow Images is the number one marketplace for high quality premium mockups, creative fonts, images 360, and a creative store full of amazing graphic assets like brushes, presets, lettering, illustrations, patterns, textures, UX, UI kits, and much, much more. I'm really enjoying their new abstract series of assets. It's quite rare that a stock service has stuff that really stands out, and I'm constantly impressed with their unique offerings. And while you can buy pieces a la carte, the best value is of course because a yellow ticket holder. Think of this like the Costco membership. It's gonna give you a much lower price when you're a power user of stock assets. You can see here all the assets that I'll be making use of in this video. And as a yellow ticket holder, it's almost 10 times cheaper. As a member, you also get to enjoy 30% off mock-up services, half off the creative store, synchronization between Dropbox and yellow images, all saving you time and money. Yellow Images are hooking us up with a discount for anything you might want on their site. The first 100 people to use the coupon code ECABRAMS20 will get 20% off when you use the link in the description and pick up some excellent assets from Yellow Images. First, let's talk about making templates in After Effects in general. If you've never done this before, it's gonna be a little primer. Let's say we've made this lovely animation here, we've got some shape layers growing, text texting, images are popping in. And if we wanna make this into a template, so someone could open it up in Premiere, never bother with After Effects, insert as many of these into a timeline, but customize them, we just have to do a few little steps. So first we open up the essential graphics panel, then we choose which composition is gonna be our primary, which of these things is the template. Then we drag whatever properties we want up into this panel, and that's gonna turn them into controls for users to enjoy later. So maybe that means the source text of this layer so that people can type whatever they want in here. And maybe the colors, let's drag some of those colors in. That'll turn into a color picker control. Maybe we could bring in position or anchor point or rotation controls, sliders, check boxes, angle controls. There are very few properties that can't end up in here. And if you're clever with expressions, the possibilities are truly endless because simple numeric controls can become all kinds of amazing cascades of changes. The latest feature available to us that we can bring into this panel is media replacement. So if you're on a newer version of After Effects and I'm using 18.2 in this tutorial, you're gonna have this new fantastic option. Say this camping image here is only temporary. We wanna give later users the ability to put whatever they want here instead. Any footage layer can be dragged up to the essential graphics panel and it becomes a new control. It's really that easy. But how does it work? Let's just go ahead and take this templated composition, drop it into a new comp as a testing environment, twirling down into the essential properties of this comp, you can see all of the things we added. And this funny little line here, that's the media we can replace. If we wanna swap new footage in here, we can just drag that new element over onto that line item and boop, the image is changed. But everything we did to that footage layer is still happening. And anything referencing or dependent on that footage layer is also still happening, but referencing the new stuff. This is a little bit similar to how you might select footage, hold alt, and then drag to replace the footage element, but it's dynamic and non-destructive. Nothing's actually changed in the original composition. As you can see, we have all these different instances. We can replace, 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 have unique instances. I hope you can see here that even inside After Effects, without making this a template, we're getting good use out of these essential properties. We've made one comp, many instances, and because these are all instances, if we go into one of them and maybe we change how this element is popping on, it's changed for all of the instances because that's something that is common to all of them. We get to change once and see that change populated many times. But bringing it back to actually making templates, I wanna point out these options here next to the image replacement itself. 
scale to fit, scale to fill, or no scale. What do these kind of options mean? Well, when you're replacing the footage with things that are the exact same size, not much. But imagine we're going to have users come in later on who may not have a perfectly square piece of footage to replace this lovely stock asset here. These rules say how that footage is going to conform to the space of the old image. I'm going to really quickly export this template here so you can see how the user experience in Premiere works, which will help us make better templates to fully understand how someone is going to interact with them. To export any template, you got to give it a name and then just hit this little button at the bottom and we'll get some options. I recommend checking all the warning boxes. If this is for commercial sale, you want to make sure your pieces are as compatible as possible. And after you export, where is that dot mogurt to that motion graphics template file actually going to go? You could send it to the cloud or just save it locally. And if you're sending this to somebody else, you're going to want to go with a local file. Just remember, you then have to manually import that, which we'll do next. And here in Premiere, we can open up that essential graphics panel, add in the templates, or we grab them from our libraries or from Adobe stock. But once it's down on our timeline, we go into the edit part of the window. And as you can see, here are all those properties we've given control over. And here's that media replacement zone. So if we have new media that we want to replace in the project, we just drag it on over into the space. Kabam. But I want to specifically bring your attention to the controls underneath here. Notice that we can refine the scale, position and other attributes of the media we're dropping in. There's still some flex and user refinement that can be done within this panel. This has actually created a new kind of secret sequence that you can access by double clicking on this media zone that contains that footage element. So there are a lot of options that become available when you use this in a template. But what can we actually do with this? In this most basic example, we have a footage layer that's being transformed at that layer level. When the footage is replaced, all the layer level changes that we put on with keyframes, those remain true. And that's kind of the most basic application of this feature. Similarly, we might apply effects to this layer or mats or masks or other means of revealing or treating. But to get some more flexibility, you might want to drop your footage into a comp as a container. This is similar to how we've been doing templates before in the pre motion graphics template times. But now we can simply make replacing the footage in the container a function of the essential properties in that higher level comp by just dragging the footage that lives in the nested comps into the essential graphics space. You can actually do this for any properties found in nested comps. But as you can see, I've got three copies of that container out here. Each one has kind of a unique treatment with effects all being revealed with a little matte layer of their own and they're all offset in time a little bit. So any footage that's brought in to replace that original footage will behave like how it's all set up because it's the contents of the containers that are being replaced. And that means that any instance of that footage container is now going to have the new stuff in it. Here's another example. Maybe we're going to do a neat little logo reveal or an intro of some kind. And I want this kind of glowing background situation, like the colors of the logo are kind of bleeding out like light. So one layer on here is the logo. And then we've got a layer behind that has blurs, a little radial blur, a little glow, some fast blurs, maybe some fractals to help get that shimmer. So the radio blurs are like volumetric light back there. And inside of these containers, that's where this logo is being revealed using mats. So when we swap out that footage that's inside the container with a new logo, all the things based on manipulating that container are also getting updated with that new asset. So as a logo reveal, this works pretty well in Premiere. The container helps make more procedural use of that swapped out asset. But layers aren't just used for what they are. We can also use them as maps for effects as well. Here I'm using a composition it's just full of a gradient, and that's the map for a time displacement. So the animation of these elements that you're seeing here is all being offset and made kind of glitchy by that gradient, which pixels are happening at what time. But I can take that layer because it has a source and drop that into the essential graphics zone, which is going to be swapped out later with something else. Maybe a photo of a different gradient that's been created in Photoshop. Maybe a picture of my dog. That's also an interesting thing to do. But we're not using footage as footage. We're using the footage as direction for how the effect should be changing. It's like having another level of control that you can give someone. It's not a value. It's not a color. It's not a text field. It's visual input. This is maybe a more advanced way to think about using this feature, but I hope that swapping media out in these ways opens up different ways of thinking about this feature, a different way of thinking about templates, or a different way of thinking about your projects in general. 
and we're just getting started with the possibilities. This is a relatively new feature, so we're just seeing the top of the iceberg of what we can do. I hope this has given you some inspiration to try it out and work it into some of your workflow and projects. If you want to see more about this kind of thing, let me know in the comments. But to make sure you get more tutorials here, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single one. If you have any questions about this or anything you see on the channel, do let me know in the comments. I try to answer all the questions when I'm able. If you end up making something with this, and I'm sure you'll make something amazing, I would love to see it. Tag me on Instagram, tweet at me on Twitter. I'm at EC Abrams everywhere on the internet. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay creative, be kind to each other.